Most Holy Trinity Seminary is a pre-Vatican II Roman Catholic International Seminary. We continue our series of interviews, introducing to our viewers the future priests who are going to be taking care of preserving the faith and the sacraments. Our guest today is Henri de la Chanoni. He's from France and is currently in his first year of theology. Hello, Henri. Thank you for joining us today. Hello, Father. Good afternoon. Could you explain to our viewers where exactly are you from? I am from Vendée, which is um, a country in France, in France, close to the Atlantic coast, under Brittany. And uh, that area has a very special historical significance for Catholics. Can you explain that? Yes. Uh, when the French Revolution happened, after the American Revolution, in, uh, 70, in 1789, um, the Vendéans uh, rose up against the Republic and uh, defended their priests, which were uh, killed by the Republicans. And they, um, uh, they uh, fight against the Republic. They were first victorious, then they um, lost the war. But what is really important to note is that uh, it was a religious, popular and sponta spontaneous rising from those people. So they basically fought against the revolution, the revolution, the, the, the ideas of the revolution. And, uh, and now you can say you are like um, the uh, one of those uh, Vandian of today. So and the resisting the revolution of Vatican II and also the the revolution of the of the political ideas of France. Um, yes. So um, it's a it's a different way, but it's the same spirit. So uh, to do, to defend the faith. Absolutely. And speaking about that, could you explain how um, did you become a city vacantist? How is your background with regard to the, the, the faith, etc.? So I was uh, in a boarding school for seven years in Avrier, which is a, a community of priests, uh, Dominicans, um, close to the SSPX. So they were not sede vacantist. My family was, but as uh, Luc, uh, the previous seminarian, said in this interview, it's difficult to think about what exactly uh, you are is when you are in those school what exactly is happening so i realized exactly the situation afterwards uh especially by reading bishop sandborn's articles uh, but even though i was i consider myself to have been a sede vacantist from even during th those years i I, uh, it was more opinionist and I attended Unacom masses. And did you talk to those uh, priests about the situation and your, your opinion or your side of the, uh, um, I would say you, your inclination to see the vacantism or not? Oh yes, they knew about it. And, uh, <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, they, they knew about it. Uh, but when I spoke to them, Afterwards, after after having left left the school, they they had not really any argument. They eventually said that yes, we are city vacantist in in practice. I said yes. Hmm, <laughs> interesting. And now, so those um, priests uh, at every year they they are not in with the society anymore, right? They are part of the resistance uh, of uh, Bishop Williamson, Bishop Four. So the seminary of Bishop Four is actually uh, in Avrier, or very close to Avrier, 
the seminarians get the classes there. I have one friend, uh, a classmate who was, uh, who is, uh, actually in the seminary. Uh, and, but the theological principles are false and nothing is, even though they are distant from those, uh, societies and by the time, uh, the theological principles are the same and so they are they are going to they are never going to have the truth about the true faith and they seem to be really confused i read that now they accept among their seminarians uh say the vacantes as long as they do not uh, express that publicly yeah, i was even proposed by bishop Ford to uh be part of this to to come to the seminary and to remain said vacantist so basically that uh, hidden op opinionism uh, yes. opinionist and um, well this is i don't know if we can call this bad faith but at, at least very bad principles Oh, yes, because again, if he if Francis is the Pope, first of all, of course, you have to obey him. They are not doing that. Uh, the whole, the, even the na their name is the resistance and um, resistance to the SSPX, resistance to Francis. But at the same time, they say it's OK if you consider Francis an anti-Pope, which is, I mean, so absurd. Um, so f how did you... Uh, realize and when did you realize you had a, a vocation to the priesthood uh, that was a little bit different than the story of the uh, it's um, I always had this idea to become a priest uh, from the childhood um, I think it's mainly due uh, to my to the very pious and Catholic family I was in. Um, my parents rose, uh, rose me uh, very, uh, in a very Catholic manner and uh, I am very thankful to, the, to them. Um, and also, yes, the influence of a uh, good priest I met, all of that contributed to, uh, to my vocation, I think, and to... And now you are at the seminary. This is your first uh, year of theology. Um, you have any preference for any course at, in the seminary? Oh, difficult to say. Um, well, ev no, I, I don't have really any preference. I think every every classes are every classes are every class is is interesting. Um, Philosophy was really abstract, and I like this very much. Um, I think French people like uh, abstract, like logic, everything, just for the sake of reasoning. So. And you have Damien, who uh, we had already the interview with uh, the other French seminarian. So when you arrived at the seminary, already there was a French seminarian, so that makes things easier for you here? That yes, yes, uh, that was Damien, that was, uh, he helped me uh, a lot, especially with uh, English. Uh, and also, uh, I want, I would like to mention Gaetan, who was a, pre a former seminarian, he left. I think he did not have a, a vocation, but he helped me before coming to the seminary, giving me some preparation to uh, remote preparation to be a good seminarian so it is hard for you to be so far from uh, your home and no it's not really hard and i think that's uh, just the, the thing to do and uh, also i think that's due also to the, to the idea that uh, i want to be a priest and that's it mm, i have nothing else to consider and you recently received your tonsure, you became a, a cleric, and that was the ceremony was in France. So can you tell our viewers about that? Yes, I have to uh, thanks. Uh, I have to thank Bishop Sandborn for that, who 
Bishop St. Bone as an apostolate in Europe and uh, he went to, in July, he went to England, to uh, Belgium and to France and uh, he, the last part of his trip was in Brittany where I, where I received uh, tonsure. Um, it was a private ceremony but uh, we did a pontifical uh, mass so that was uh, that was good yes. and so the you see any future for the apostle once you are with uh, Damien there in France what do you think uh, will be the first thing you will do after I mean yes the uh, mass center probably but you you have any plans ideas projects for france well as i said the bishop uh, is already present in europe sometimes so uh, not really in france but in england there's a mass center we might we might have to uh, say mass here but in france i think the uh, importance important thing to do is to uh, to do a school so as to uh, continue the, the practical uh, formation of children uh, because we have mass everything but and the sacraments but uh, what is important is to have really a catholic spirit and and uh, uh, that the faithful can live a catholic life and so for that a school is really necessary absolutely and speaking about the situation in france there is also the problem of uh, the immigrants the political situation is quite um uh also a, a cause of uh, trouble and uh, uh, distress in france right now and how how as a frenchman you see any possibility of conversion of apostolate uh, among the, the Muslims there? Well, I think the Muslims won't convert in mass. First of all, it's, um, it's a pen punishment for ap apostate friends who, since the French, French Revolution, is uh, abandoning faith and even ca uh, Catholic culture so that's a punishment and so god is not certainly not going to permit a, a massive conversion of muslims but all the contrary i think and uh, in a individual level uh, i think muslims are really impressed by the ex example you give to them so it's why the novus ordo is really bad because um you just uh, they they just uh, have no principle no firm idea to uh, they adhere to and so i think the important thing is to give a good example and live a really catholic life in front of them without any fear of them yes it's, it's true that the no sordo is nothing that attracts people to the no sordo <laughs> On the other hand, we Catholics, uh, yes, by our example, we can attract uh, those who do not know about the Catholic faith, and they can see the difference between the, the false religion of Vatican II and the, the true Catholic religion by just looking at us and what we do and uh, what we teach, etc. you have any advice to possible candidates for the seminary? Well, I would like to mention uh, Catholic families once again because I think that's uh, something really important in, uh, in the remote preparation of a vocation, that uh, there, there should be a Catholic, um, uh, Catholic spirit around, uh, around the, a future candidate. So, yes, we have converted people in the seminary, but it's not, I would say, the normal way, uh, I think, uh, Catholic families, families with uh, spiritual reading in common and uh, Catholic ent entertainment, everything is something really important and give a complete uh, 
a complete different spirit to to someone yes so that's important too because of all the dangers of the in the world and the attractions and the uh, the false uh, pleasures and maxims of the world but, but if the family is strong in the faith and they teach that to the kids it's true it's more possibilities for a vocation yeah. so thank you Henri for having been uh, with us today no, now you can resume your duties in the seminary thank you father <laughs>